Thanks everyone for joining. Uh, Bradford Ferguson, Matt Smith from Rebellion Air here again. Um, wanted to talk about one of the other names that uh, we've been talking a lot about that is, I think, probably the most misunderstood of the of the names in, in our portfolio, uh, and that's NVIDIA. Um, a lot of the people, I think, watching right now might just think, in general, it seems a little bit overvalued, but um, at Halter Ferguson, we've been invested in clients before I even joined in NVIDIA for two years now, right? So when I think a lot of people were talking about NVIDIA for crypto, um, you were <laughs> looking at NVIDIA for the AI play. So can you maybe yeah. walk us back two years ago? What were you thinking at that time, Bradford, about AI's prospects in, in the long term? So we had seen what the hyperscalers had done uh, with NVIDIA. So that's uh, Meta or Facebook, Amazon, Google. They had bought NVIDIA for their data centers and, and used it extensively for their uh, recommendation engines. And we thought that AI would need to filter down uh, from these ginormous companies down to large enterprise. And that essentially that what AI does is it drives down cost, which is good. And it also increases value to your customer. Uh, when you can do both of those, then you can have you know really strong competitive position against your your uh, against your competition. And what I what I see in in March was that uh, people in the Tesla community were cracking down on Nvidia because of a, the high PE that it had, and it wasn't even close to like four hundred dollars at that time. When we're looking at PE, we're we're looking backwards. So that's price of earnings, and typically you're looking on a trailing basis. And what NVIDIA was going through then was they had just Osborne their product, not intentionally, their new product got leaked. And then people are waiting for the specs, they were waiting for the pricing to figure out uh, when they buy and how much do they buy and all that. Uh, so they were going through that struggle, but then the the new supply of the new chips was about to come on and surprise everyone. What we didn't quite expect was like how profound Chat GPT would be, um, as far as like uh, get it getting everyone excited about AI. So kind of thinking back to that March moment, like you said, um, that was absolutely when when the stock went parabolic on this kind of I would say combination of. AI, you know, frenzy. I mean, this was right when ChatGPT was really coming into the public consciousness, but also like a pretty massive uh, forward earnings uh, uh, wasn't a revision necessarily, but 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 guidance for the coming quarter um, that really just blew people out of the mind, just with the magnitude of I think it was something like a forty percent quarter over quarter revenue increase that they were they were guiding for, which was mm -hmm. no on nobody's <laughs> radar. Um, so the stock obviously you know rallied very. Uh, strongly on the back of that news. And so a lot of commentators might say, hey, look, you were kind of right on this AI play. Why not, you know, take your chips off the table and, and kind of realize that gain? You were right. And uh, so in other words, why still hold it today after this incredible run up to, a, you know, the trillion dollar market cap company that it is today? Isn't it overvalued when you're looking at these these PE metrics? And, and we we did trim some then, but we didn't sell completely. And um when we look forward from here, um, just taking the guidance from NVIDIA and, and assu assuming it's generally true, and and their CFO is kind of sandbagged <laughs> each quarter. Um, maybe they've tried their best to get it right, but they've been low. Looking at next year, it's possible they do a hundred billion in revenue. They end up with you know, some order of like 60 billion in profit, uh, maybe potentially even after tax, which would be close to $24, $25 a share. Um, when you do all that, and then you look at what's, what's the price you're paying for that next, next year's earnings, next fiscal year earnings, that's only 21. Like that's in a value stock territory. That's, that's a, the price of earnings you pay for a company that's growing at a stable rate, um, it may be only like 5% a year growing their earnings at that level. Um, so we think that it, NVIDIA is um, still undervalued. Um, the, the big question is like, how much do they grow after next year? And one thing we know is that 
they have a tremendous amount of supply that's going to be coming online around then. So <laughs> their growth, it like their revenues may may double or triple from there. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with pricing of their products. So they, they make uh, chips that go into the data center that basically create the computer brain for chat GPT or for AI. And, um, and that's what it's doing. And a lot of the data centers, they just need to move generally from being CPU heavy or being very heavy on this generalized compute to um, moving to being heavy on what's called accelerated compute, which is driven by the GPUs that NVIDIA specializes in and the AI chip, they're really good at accelerated or parallel computing. So you you have the CPU um, that's kind of like the traffic cop and the general compute. It it runs the traffic for the accelerated compute to <laughs> to to really let a rip. And and what's exciting about accelerated compute is that um, on a per performance per watt basis, so performance per power used, it's can be about 10x better than CPU or generalized compute. <laughs> yeah, so so one of the things Jensen Wong has, has talked a lot about on in his or not only earnings calls, but also just other presentations he's done is essentially if you if your product is that much better than the incumbents, you essentially need to rebuild all the existing data center infrastructure, right? In order to, to be GPUs. So, you know, I think if you if you look at what's the the build out opportunity, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to kind of look at, hey, like how many data centers were built last year and how many are going to need to be built going forward? It's like, <laughs> you need to replace everything <laughs> like yesterday. And then on top of that, I think if, if I were to think of just what's one macro trend that is going to be sustainable for, let's just say the next like three decades, probably beyond that. I think it, it would probably be that there's going to be bigger need for compute going forward, right? Yeah. As we're going into, you know, such an, uh, a tech heavy world when AI, and an AI heavy world. Um, but I want to maybe bring it back to, to the financials that you were, you were talking about at the beginning of this, this, this piece of the answer. Mm -hmm. So if you, I'm, I'm looking at, at NVIDIA's, you know, PEs and on a trailing basis, they're at, you know, a 63 and on a forward basis, according to, so forward, you know, taking into account analyst estimates, Mm -hmm. which keep in mind, a lot of sell-side analysts tend to be conservative around like big parabolic moves like this. Think of Tesla back in 2019, 2020. Yeah. Uh, analysts always, you know, undershot the actual performance. But I, even even with analyst estimates, the forward PE is only 24. And that's only looking out, you know, one year into the future. It's mm -hmm. not looking out, hey, where's NVIDIA going to be two, three years in, into the future? So this is, I think, where you're saying there's there's more upside because, Looking at just one year into the future, we think the analysts are too low, but we also think that 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 growth is going to be sustainable two, three, four years into the future, right? Yeah. And, and the risk with NVIDIA is that they go through these cycles where they have a technology and they flip over to a new uh, chipset and, and they are constantly uh, doing that cr creative destruction in their business. So uh, Wall Street's generally going to be worried that NVIDIA is toward the top of a cycle when, when times are going well. Um, but based off of how profound this AI is at reducing costs, increasing productivity, and we've seen it with our business. I got a lot of hands-on work with using chat GPT to code and um, do some cool stuff with data. Um, I don't think this is suddenly going to end or, or slow down after a year. Um, and AMD is coming on with some competing technology. Uh, they have their their 300, I think it's called like the HI or IX or whatever. Um, AMD is not going to be able to make enough to um, take a ton of the opportunity away from NVIDIA. Tesla, if they could, they would buy as many NVIDIA um, AI supercomputers as they could. Um, but like they're in line, they're in line behind, uh, Facebook and Microsoft, Amazon. I, I think Amazon and Microsoft are ordering 150,000 each <laughs> of, of these, uh, NVIDIA, uh, 
GH200s or H200s or whatever it's, it's called. Um, so and there's that's, like, that's like a quarter of total output just for like to anchor people. Like that's wild. Just two orders is like, like the entire output that I think NVIDIA did last quarter. Uh -huh. it's, it's like absolutely massive amounts. Like I've seen some analysts in the industry talking about how many tons of supercomputers <laughs> NVIDIA is shipping because it's just so massive. Um, we think uh, at least a trillion needs to be spent to move the data centers further along on accelerated compute. And it may be more like 1.7 to $2 trillion. So if next year NVIDIA may do a hundred, a hundred billion, you know, that, that only gives them like 10% of the way there, or maybe even 5% of the way there. Um, so I, I, we think there's a lot of opportunity here. There's also some risk that uh, NVIDIA may need to lower prices, um, maybe after they get this big supply bump next year. So you need to be careful of where you think earnings are going to go after that. Um, but you know, we think people are being conservative and a, a bit dismissive. It, whenever you have big numbers start to come into play, like <laughs> 100 billion in, in revenue, 60 billion in profit, um, People get a little nervous. They get a little skeptical and cynical. Um, we don't think that's warranted just yet. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's a, a really, I think, probably a good way to wrap it up. I mean, I, I was going to bring it into, you know, the competition. You know, the, there's other kind of interesting technologies. Cerberus is another one of them that ha is doing some really interesting things that, you know, could eventually kind of eat market share. But I think what you're what you're describing is you know like a let's call it a two year window where frankly like <laughs> everybody will take as many nvidia gpus as they can get their hands on and they'll pay whatever price they can to mm -hmm. take advantage of that so so we've seen this gross margin expansion already in in the numbers and i think that's uh very likely to uh continue for the next couple of years um but i think what you're saying is, is maybe in the longer term volumes are going to be sustained at high levels for many years into the future uh, but maybe margins come back down to, you know, the 50%, 60% kind of range that they had been at more historically. Is that a kind of fair capture of, of sentiment here? Yeah, that's probably what we'll look to do as we adjust, you know, how, how we're viewing things moving forward. Uh, Cerebras, I, I think they might have a cost problem that they, they essentially make, uh, maybe I'm characterizing it wrong, but the perfect wafer. So they they create their supercomputer on on this big like silicon wafer and it's all on one wafer it, but it like you need a perfect wafer i think um so they don't they don't cobble it together from multiple wafers i think there's a cost issue there um also with dojo um there there's some word on the street that their second generation didn't go the way they want and that might be one reason why there was some turnover there where it, it's not where they want yet. So Tesla may be forced to continue to buy from NVIDIA. Certainly they're gonna make the first generation and it's gonna be great for video training. Um, but after that, um, they may, the, they'll likely need more help from NVIDIA. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Elon's even admitted that this is, there's a bit of a risk that Dojo ultimately falls flat, right? And so I think we're we're kind of in that stage where it's possible that it, it may be falling flat and, may just be more economical for Tesla to to scale with Nvidia than to try to continue on on this project. So of course mm -hmm. as Tesla bulls we you know want Dojo to succeed yes. and I'd love to see like you know compute as a service in, in some manner that that Tesla could do training AI training as a service but uh we also want to be kind of realistic about our assessment of, of any company. Um yeah so it's we haven't even touched on on some of the other pieces of NVIDIA's business. Now, I wonder kind of beyond AI, are you optimistic about some of the other things? Um, you know, we, we did touch on on crypto and how that wasn't necessarily a, a reason you were uh, in uh, NVIDIA to begin with, but uh, and, and Ethereum did go to proof of stake. So it's, it's probably w worth noting that a lot of that compute uh, that was for the Ethereum network is no longer going to be there. Mm -hmm. But do yeah. you think, you know, either on, on Bitcoin, you know, mining or on any of the other cryptos or even on um, like just pure graphics and gaming. That's another big piece of their business that is maybe less sexy than than AI and the opportunity there. But what are your thoughts on kind of the, the balance of the business opportunity for NVIDIA? I think their gaming cards will do all right. It's 
not really in our focus as much, but one thing that's nice about those cards and the, the, I'm, I'm forgetting the, the, the 4090, I have one of them at home. You can use those to run AI models. Um, so you can use that as like a home uh, version of <laughs> doing the models. So I, I think you can run like uh, Facebook's model on it possibly, or like a, a lower parameter uh, model. Um, so there's that usefulness there. Uh, gaming's doing okay. Um, next year you have Grand Theft Auto 6 coming out. That's gonna drive a, a fair amount of activity on people, you know, building their computers, all that. Um, so I think gaming will be okay. Um, so, but it's not really a, a focus for ours. Yeah. Yeah. It, it does kind of remind me that uh quote Elon had recently, like, we should really just stop calling these GPUs. Like they became GPUs because it was like the initial application for the six hour to compute was graphics processing, uh, hence, mm -hmm. hence the name. But um, now the use case is really so much broader than that, that uh, like it, <laughs> the name has stuck, but uh, really it's, we should be thinking about, it, I think more at, along the lines of accelerated compute, like you were saying. Yep. So that's the, that's the big opportunity. And it has some applications in, in graphics and gaming, but uh, the real uh, interesting honeypot here is certainly on the AI side. And that's a, that's a trend we're extremely bullish on. Let me talk about one concern is China. Um, basically the U S government doesn't want NVIDIA or, or AMD selling their cards to, to China so that China can't catch up in AI. Um, you know, also Russia's under the, the sanctions uh, from the war in Ukraine. So those markets are shut off. Um, it, what the U S government did was said, well, if you make them, you know, an eighth as powerful, so 87% less powerful, you could sell them to China and then it's something like that. And then NVIDIA made a design that did that. And then the US government and China proceeded to buy a chunk. And the US government's like, well, we don't like that. Um, so um, we're gonna change the rules again. So some people are worried about that, but yeah, as we stated earlier, this opportunity in AI is so big that we think that, and accelerated compute that, um, even the loss of a market as big as China um, isn't going to hold them down that much for a long while. Maybe maybe it'll impact them in uh, you know three or four years from now, maybe yeah four or five years from now, but not not yet. And and maybe one last question on on the China um, risk. What about on the on the supply side? So um, a big piece of NVIDIA's supply comes from Taiwan Semi, uh, mm -hmm. Taiwan Semi. Um, there's always been kind of rumors or, or, or talk of uh, some sort of invasion by China or otherwise geopolitical tensions that for one reason or another could prevent Taiwan Semi from uh, supplying as much as maybe NVIDIA would like. How, how do you think about that, that potential risk to NVIDIA's supply, supply base? It is a risk. It's, it's a risk for a lot of chip stocks. Um, one thing that's funny is people have been selling Taiwan Semi stock and buying ASML, which makes the equipment that goes to Taiwan Semi, but it also is equipment that goes to uh, Samsung. But like, you know, uh, Taiwan Semi is such a big customer for them. Like, I don't think that works either. Uh, eventually, uh, Taiwan Semi is going to be moving capacity over to the U.S. They have a big plant. I believe it's in Arizona um, that they're they're building up. I think it's producing uh, chips already. So, uh, you know, they're they're moving their factory so that if anything happened with China, it wouldn't be fatal to Taiwan Semi. Um, that is a risk for sure, though. Yeah. So but, but probably more of a short term risk. And, and like you said, there's already both, both companies are aware of that risk and are kind of actively trying to manage their supply chain around that issue today, right? And I, I think the U.S. government is working on that, too. Um, so there was a controversial flight where Nancy Pelosi flew over to Taiwan and uh, you know, people weren't liking that. Like China, I think, was, was threatening Taiwan over it. I, I think part of the reason for that flight is that there's, there's some coordination going on to kind of 
have a backup in place um, in, in case China does decide to do something with Taiwan. Yeah. Well, appreciate the insights. Any final thoughts before we we break? That's going to be it. I'll say bye for now. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bradford. Thanks, everyone, for watching.